In this tutorial, we're going to cover adding traffic sources to one of your projects. Now, the real magic of Giru doesn't really happen until you add a traffic source because that's what's going to drive the simulations and the numbers and what's going to calculate things for you to show you what your marketing funnel can actually do. So in order to add a traffic source to a model that we're building inside of Giru, a funnel that we're designing, we're going to have to have an entry point. That basically tells Giru where traffic is going to come in. In other words, what landing page the traffic is going to go to. So in the left-hand menu, we'll see entry point appear in the upper left. We drag that icon onto the canvas. It's labeled number one. And now it puts this little box onto the canvas. It says no traffic sources because we don't have any yet. I'm going to show you how to add those. But that's the first thing we need is an entry point. Now, if we bring this close to our little opt-in page here, it's going to auto connect and then we could you know move it over here however we want to design it but the line is connected so this just says whatever traffic sources we add to entry point number one to this little box here that traffic is going to go directly to this free golfer port opt-in page so i just set up this very simple model it's an opt-in page that converts at 50 percent and then they see a thank you page once they click you know subscribe so it's a very simple just kind of lead gen model where we're going to be collecting leads to opt in for a free golf report. So now that we have our entry point, we can add traffic sources. But before I do that, I'm going to add a second entry point onto the canvas. You'll notice the icon now says number two. This dynamically updates to let you know what the next numbered entry point will be that you're going to drag onto the canvas. So we drag this on. Now we have our number two entry point. And you can now go back and look and see the icon now says three because the next one will be number three. And if we were to delete one of these, then it drops down a number because it's always just telling you what would be the next thing that you'd put on the canvas. So I'm not going to connect our entry point number two to anything, but I need it there to show you something. So now that we've got this entry point box connected to a landing page in the funnel, that's where traffic is going to start and go. Now let's add an actual traffic source. So if you click on this box, you'll see a plus comes up, this red little plus, you click that. And now we see traffic sources. And if we already had a bunch of traffic sources set up for that entry point, we would see them all listed here. It doesn't list all the traffic sources you have set up for this project. It's only by that entry point. To see them all, you would go up, I'll close this real quick, up here under the right hand corner, traffic sources, you'd click this gear icon and it brings up a very similar looking pop-up box, but it will list all of the traffic sources you currently have set up for all of your entry points. So that's how you get a basic overview to manage those is by this gear icon. And of course, this number zero will change based on how many traffic sources you add. So when you add one, it'll say one. You add another, it'll say two. Kind of obvious. Now, come back over here. Let's add a traffic source. We push that. It says no traffic sources yet, so we're going to add new. Now, this is kind of our little traffic sources settings. We give it a campaign name. Let's just call it Facebook Ads 1. You can name this anything you want. These names are just to help you know what it is. And when you run reports, those labels will be shown. So name it something you'll know what it is, whether it's you know FA for Facebook Ads and it's Golf 45, 55, Dash 55M, if it's you know for 45 to 50 year old males, if that's what you were targeting with that ad campaign, put in whatever you need to to know what it is. Now this next setting is very important. It says entry point. It's asking us which entry point box basically this traffic source that we're creating is going to go into. If we were to pick entry point two, it's going to send this traffic into that second one that we added to the canvas. We obviously don't want to do that. It's not connected to anything. But the reason why I added that second traffic source is that you'll see it shows you however many is on the canvas. If I didn't add that, your only option would be entry point one. So if you have, let's say, five entry points on a project, you'll see all five listed and you pick the one that you want. So we're just going to pick entry point one. Now we pick what type of traffic source it actually is. So it's Facebook ads, so we're going to pick Facebook ads. Now, as a note, this traffic source entry called Facebook ads is pretty much just an aesthetic label right now. It has an associated icon to it and you'll see that show up in the entry point box and you'll see it on reports. So it's going to help you know kind of what it is, but there's no other kind of magical power that's behind making this Facebook ads and not, let's say, Instagram. 
It's all going to act the same based on the math that you're entering. However, we've designed it this way not only so it looks good, so you see the different types of logos and different types of icons that represent that traffic source, but also we structured this so somewhere in the future, we might be able to add the ability to pull specific data from those sources, whether we're going to automatically pull you know, analytics or stuff from your ad manager or other hidden costs. We'd be able to do that if the traffic sources are labeled with where they're coming from. So we've built that in kind of thinking into the future or whether we end up adding that stuff or not, at least we have the flexibility. But let's put this on Facebook ads. Now we're asked, what are the monthly visitors? So let's say this is gonna send 1,000 visitors a month into our funnel. Next, we have acquisition type. That's how we're gonna pay for it or what you know how we're charged for it. Typically, you're gonna pay by click. So you'd leave it on clicks and then CPC is the cost per click, how much you're gonna pay per click. Now, you can put traffic sources in here like for ad campaigns and pay by impression. Basically, a CPM is the cost that you'd pay for advertising on an ad being displayed a thousand times for that CPM price. So if you said $5 CPM, which is kind of a common price for some more targeted banner advertising, let's say, for $5, you'll have your banner ad shown a thousand times on a website. That's what CPM is. You would put the rate per number of 1,000 times it's shown. Well, if we go that route, we're gonna to need to also add CTR or the click-through rate whatever the click-through rate is on average for that ad. So if we put the CTR, let's say, at 1%, which is you know in the ballpark of realistic, that means for every 1,000 times that the ad is shown based on the CPM cost, like for five bucks, if it's 1%, that means 10 people will click on it for every 1,000 times it shows, 1% of 1,000. So at $5 per thousand or CPM cost, that means we're paying 50 cents a click for those 10 people per 1,000 shows of the ad. But to keep it simple, you can just put on clicks. We'll say we pay a dollar per click from the Facebook ad. Now, this conversion strength setting is a more advanced feature. I recommend at least for a while, you just leave everything at 100. However, what that's for is, if you do want to add a traffic source to Giru, and you do want to represent that it's a weaker source of traffic, because all traffic isn't created equal, traffic will convert at different levels. If you want to add a traffic source, let's say that's weaker, and maybe let's say it converts at about half as much as more targeted traffic does, you could change this conversion strength setting to 50. And what that means is all the traffic that's coming from that traffic source, going through the entry point where you assign it, and going into the funnel that you've built, will convert at 50% across the board for the entire funnel. So every single conversion area, the number and the calculations being done by Giro will be cut in half. For example, if we send that to this golf report opt-in page that we've currently have set at 50% opt-in rate, and if we set this traffic source to 50% conversion strength, this traffic will opt into that page at 25%, half as much of the current setting. And of course, if that traffic went on to a sales page that let's say had a 5% conversion rate, that conversion rate would then be calculated for this traffic source if it's set to 50% conversion strength, it would convert at 2.5% sales conversion, half of what the normal setting is because we've set this to 50% conversion strength. To keep it simple, just leave it at 100. So we click Save. Now we see it show up in the list. If we come over here, we can click this X and delete it if we want to remove a traffic source. We can click on the name and come back in here and change any of this stuff. But then once we're done with that, we just click Close and we close it out. Now, if we look back over here to the right-hand side, we will notice that these numbers now are updating. We're getting 1,000 visitors a month from Facebook, 1,000 total. We have a $1,000 a month traffic cost, $1,000 in total expenses. We're starting to see this populate, 1,000 expenses, $1,000 for traffic. It's just splitting on how the total is broken down. Then we have our EPC, cost per lead, revenue, so on and so forth. Now, we don't have any revenue yet. Uh, we don't have any you know, EPCs of what we're on average earning per visitor that comes to the funnel. 
Uh, we don't have a cost per acquisition, how much we pay to acquire a customer because we don't have any products on this uh, funnel map yet that's actually selling anything. We're just sending traffic into the opt-in for now. But we do have a cost per lead. So we're able to get leads for $2 with our example model so far because we're paying a dollar per click for the traffic that comes in here and lands on the opt-in page and 50% opt-in, so one out of every two visitors, which at a dollar per click means it costs us $2 for every lead or every opt-in that we get. So that's the basics of how you add traffic to a Giru project. You first need an entry point, then the entry point needs to be connected to a landing page, you know, with that dotted line. So you need to bring it close enough to create the line. Now you know they're connected, so it can flow almost like water through a pipe. And then of course you click the red plus and you add a traffic source. You can also add traffic sources through the gear icon next to traffic sources that we looked at up here in the right. And you'll see that says one because we've added one traffic source. Now, let me show you a shortcut really, really quick before we end this tutorial. Now, Giro was designed from the ground up to allow you to add as much detailed information you want about marketing funnels and models and traffic campaigns and expenses or as little as you want. So let's say you want to build a model, you want to simulate some results, you want to send some traffic through, but you don't want to add all 50 Facebook campaigns that you currently have running for a client. You don't want to go in here and do them one by one. You know, it's pretty fast to be able to add them, but let's say you just you don't want to do that. You you want to model a new business idea maybe that has no traffic campaigns and you don't want to simulate a bunch of different campaigns or let's say you are modeling an existing marketing funnel for that client I talked about that had 50 campaigns and you just want to add an upsell to the marketing funnel and see how those traffic numbers would have changed if you would have had the upsell. So you can add a traffic source that represents a lot of different traffic sources. Let me show you how to do that. If you come back in here and you click the red plus and we go to add a traffic source and let's just call this group traffic one. We can name anything we want, but this is gonna represent a bunch of different traffic. It could be many different Facebook ad campaigns. It could be Facebook ads, Google AdWords, Instagram sponsorships. It could be a bunch of stuff just in this group that we're calling group traffic one. It could also be organic traffic. So you can add, or, and by the way, you can add organic traffic campaigns in here and just put zero for the cost per click. That's not costing you anything and have those numbers contribute to the calculations. But let's say we have some SEO numbers that are gonna be combined within this group traffic and it's gonna be related to content marketing where we're paying someone, let's say $1,500 a month to create blog posts for us. So we do have that cost. Well, we can average that into how many visitors it's kind of bringing us and we can kind of get a cost per click cost for some kind of organic traffic that we're kind of generating to our site or funnel uh, because it is costing us money even though it's not uh, kind of advertising. But anyways, let's call this group traffic. Let's also send it to entry point one. Now for traffic source, it's not a specific traffic source. The best thing to do is we use this custom traffic. It's just kind of a generic label. Let's say this is 10,000 monthly visitors are sent by this group traffic altogether. And let's say it is a bunch of ad campaigns. Some of them cost $2 a click, some of them 50 cents a click. But if we were to average out all 10,000 monthly visitors, let's say it's costing us 75 cents a click on average for those 10,000. So now we're just gonna add this one big generic traffic source that represents a bunch of other stuff just to be able to put the numbers into Giru and be able to simulate it and kind of run some reports and start seeing cause and effect of what our changes to our kind of marketing funnel design or business model on the canvas is gonna do by you know us having this representation of traffic. So we save that. Now we see it just shows up like a normal campaign. We can delete it. We can go back in here and edit it, close that. And now we notice our numbers are changing again automatically. We now have two traffic sources that group one counts as one. We have 11,000 total visitors, traffic cost of 8,500. And then our summary is pretty much how it was because this is all all traffic really. That's what this is showing is how much of the expenses are traffic. Uh, it's showing 50-50, it's actually 100%, but that's how the breakdown is done. Uh, you'll see why when you start adding other expenses uh, because it separates traffic cost in the chart 
uh, from everything else. So that's actually kind of inaccurate when it's by itself. Anyways, we're now seeing that our cost per lead has dropped to $1.55 because we're sending some traffic to that landing page for only 75 cents now instead of a dollar. And of course, we're getting crushed here with our profit. We're losing 8,500 a month or 102,000 a year because we don't have any product sales yet. Of course, you wanna watch the next tutorial on setting up a sales page to see how we can start selling some products. But that's how you add traffic to Giru. It's not very complicated. You need an entry point, then the entry point connects to a landing page and where the traffic's gonna go. And then you add tr traffic campaigns and sources inside that entry point. So if we wanna add traffic and send it into the funnel at a different point, well then we could use entry point number two and connect that to some other landing page. For example, if we had a sales page and we wanted to simulate retargeting ads for cart abandonment, then we could set up kind of a miniature funnel inside our project that just goes you know, right to the sales page again, or even right to the order form again. And we could set up a traffic source for a retargeting campaign that goes into entry point number two, and that traffic just connects directly to that sales page uh, that we added or right to another order form that we've added on the funnel. And that would represent how that traffic is coming just to entry point number two. But you can have unlimited entry points, unlimited campaigns. You can send them to different landing pages. And Giro, of course, will do all the calculation reporting automatically for you behind the scenes. Uh, and that's, of course, the power of the tool to be able to do that and show you all kinds of very neat stuff with your numbers very, very quickly. So you just drag and drop, add them in, and it will show you what the numbers are. So that's how you add traffic sources. Now you wanna go watch a tutorial, of course, on how to work with sales pages to start to sell products.